Welcome to Cardicum channel, please like this video. Click on the subscribe button and hit the notification bell down below to stay updated every time we post our latest video. Brake Jutter If the brake disc rotor is distorted, vibration with a thumping feeling is transmitted from the brake pedal to the sole of the driver's foot when the brakes are applied. At the same time, the steering wheel, instrument panel and seat body vibrate up and down. This is a forced vibration of brake frictional force, caused mainly by the fluctuation of the braking force. This causes the brake system, disc or drum to vibrate, which transmits to the body and steering system through the axle and suspension, resulting in amplified vibration. How brake jetter is generated. This customer is concerned about a brake pedal vibration when braking from high speeds. Sounds like brake judder. After a quick road test, we verified that we are dealing with a brake judder concern. Let's go back to the shop and talk about what causes this incident. Brake judder is caused by rotor thickness variation. Thickness variation results from the brake pads gradually wearing or machining the rotor. Rotor runout results from many factors including excessive heat buildup, rust or over torquing the lug nuts. Excessive rotor runout can result in rotor thickness variation over time. As a result of rotor thickness variation, the brake pads do not contact the rotor smoothly. As the brake pads move in and out while following the contour of the rotor, the caliper piston moves and creates a pressure change within the brake's hydraulic system which causes the pulsation or judder felt at the brake pedal. In some cases, a vibration or judder may also be felt through the steering wheel and or floor of the vehicle. How to fix brake judder? The first step is to measure the rotor thickness. Using a micrometer, measure 10 millimeters in from the outside diameter of the rotor to ensure that the rotor can be turned. Be sure to make measurements in multiple spots around the rotor in order to get the lowest reading. If the rotor thickness is not within specifications, the rotor cannot be turned and will need to be replaced. It looks like this rotor is within specifications. With the rotor removed, we can turn the rotor to eliminate the runout. After the rotor has been turned, we'll need to clean the hub before reinstalling the rotor. Be sure to thoroughly clean the hub surface to eliminate the possibility of debris between the rotor and the hub. Next, we'll need to index the rotor to the hub. Install the rotor and use a piece of chalk to put an alignment mark on the rotor and the axle. With the rotor mounted and secured with properly torqued lug nuts, use a dial indicator and measure the rotor runout in this mounting position. Then write down your reading. Now remove the rotor, rotate it, reinstall it, and retorque the lug nuts. Then use the dial indicator and measure and record rotor runout in this mounting position. We need to perform this procedure four times because this vehicle has four lugs or mounting positions. What we're trying to do is find the mounting location that has the least amount of rotor runout. After identifying the mounting position with the least runout, we can install the rotor and continue with the repair. As you may have noticed, this is a lot of work. Let's take a look at the most effective and expedient method of eliminating brake judder and excessive rotor runout using the AMCO on-car brake lathe. After we verified the complaint, we'll begin by removing the caliper. Use a piece of wire to hang the caliper from the front coil spring. We don't want the brake hose to support the weight of the caliper. With the caliper removed, we can measure the rotor thickness to see if the rotor can be turned. It looks like we're okay, so let's continue. Next, put an alignment mark on the rotor and the axle to ensure the rotor remains in its original position. There is no need to perform the time-consuming indexing step that we looked at earlier 
because the on-car brake lathe takes rotor runout into consideration as it is machined on the vehicle. The index mark is important because if the rotor is removed and reinstalled incorrectly after it has been machined on the vehicle, the runout may be excessive and result in a brake judder incident. To stop, loosen the engagement knob. After you've completed cutting the rotor, recheck rotor runout. The average runout will range from 0.03 millimeters, 12 thousandths of an inch, to 0.07 millimeters, 28 thousandths of an inch. But refer to the service manual for the vehicle you're working on. To improve rotor surface finish and further reduce noise, sand the rotor with a non-directional swirl pattern using number 500 grit aluminum oxide sandpaper. After reassembling the brakes, test drive the vehicle for proper brake operation. Thank you for watching Carticum channel. Please subscribe and visit www.carticum.com for more car troubleshooting guide.